be all of them. I don't know. Doug, you've been doing this for 14 years. Have we ever talked to defensive linemen it's after been, a broadcast? It's been very rare. <laughs> I don't know if we have or not. I have to go back and check the data things yeah. to find out. I love it, though. We're going to talk to Will first. And, Will, Coach talked to me earlier this week about you just being the unquestioned leader of that line. What you guys were able to do tonight, the preparation that it had to take, knowing that you could either see a mobile quarterback or a pro-style guy, that had to be difficult to prepare for these guys. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, we just trust in our coaches, our coaching staff. We have some dogs on the defense. As long as we're working all together, it's hard to beat us. Yes, sir. We saw late in the game the starters still in the ball game when it was well in hand, but we talked about it. it must have just been a point of pride. You guys needed to finish off that shutout. Yeah, we love looking at that scoreboard at the end of the game and seeing a zero. That's what we work for every day. Appreciate it. We'll move over and talk Thank to Jake. You. And Jake, uh, to pitch that shutout in the first round atmosphere when obviously it's winner go home. Tell me about that and just the mindset going throughout the week knowing that that was the goal. Um, you know, our coaches preach to us 1 0 every week, every day. Own the practice, learn something new, get better at something new. And uh, this week, we had that in mind, and uh, we didn't want to break this family up. I promise you that. Offensively, you didn't get uh, the glory moment of catching a touchdown pass this week, unfortunately. Can't do it. Maybe we'll work it in there uh, next week against Mesquite. But uh, the guys working behind you, a uh, tremendous job all around. Brag on some of your, uh, your running back, your quarterback, your receivers. Cameron Harpel, that's my dog. I love him to death. Uh, he made the move to H back uh, this offseason. He was kind of timid about it, but if you look on the film, it's very dang good. Hayden Metcalf, Tyler Bailey, they know it a ball. And next week, like I mentioned, the Mesquite Skeeters are waiting. 1-0. You just got to be 1-0 again next week. Yes, sir. 1-0 every week. Appreciate it, Jake. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Great win. Thank Doug? You. All right. Thanks a lot, Chris, and thanks to the guys down. You're watching the Texas 21 High School Football Game of the Week. This is the Nebraska Furniture Mart Halftime Report. Prosper leads Wiley 14 to nothing in Class 6A Division I Texas High School playoff action. Well, coming up this weekend, we will learn the five finalists for the Landry Award, which is handed to the best high school football player in Dallas-Fort Worth. Some legends have walked away with this hardware in previous years. Let's take a look at the past five winners. Last year, it was T.J. McDaniel, the running back from South Lake Carroll, who is now making a significant impact for the SMU Mustangs. In 2017, John Stephen Jones from Highland Park, who's now at Arkansas. Kennedy Brooks, the Mansfield running back, taking home in 2016. Jet Duffy, now at Texas Tech, from Mansfield Lake Ridge was your 2015 winner. And Kyler Murray, Landry Ward, and on to a Heisman Trophy coming out of Allen High School. Again, coming up this weekend, we will find out who those finalists are. Doug, LD, and I all get to give our feedback on who we think should get a chance to win the Landry Award at season's end. And we'll take a look at our top three players. We'll start with mine. And the Duncanville defense has been absolutely phenomenal all year long. Chris Thompson Jr. is my top choice for the Landry Award, not only at a fantastic athlete on the field, but he has a 3.9 GPA, was student of the month in the Duncanville ISD, and also 